Who knew protected off-grid communications would be so interesting to people? Uh, I kind of did, but I was surprised to see how many people were commenting on my little meshtastic LoRa video. Over 700,000 people on that first video, and there's two more that explain range testing, about three miles before I gave up. It'll go further than that. And then also the long live stream on how to set this up and make this effective for you. But you had more questions, and one thing I didn't compare, even though I did also review it, is the Gotenna meshes, mesh devices, which are made by Gotenna. These also make mesh networks. These are also AES-256 encrypted, but there are some big differences between these two devices. Let's talk about it today on the Ham Radio Crash Course. Off-grid protected communication via little dongles like these. What am I talking about specifically? Well, sending text messages, basically sending the location of these devices. If there were many of them and these were strapped onto somebody, you could see where that person was at. If they wanted to, they can turn that off. And then you can also send text messages via your phone um, using the network that these are on, right? Off-grid implies not AT&T, not Verizon, not things that are tracking you that can provide your location to other entities, whatever they're worth. And I'm not making a political statement on any of this. I'm just explaining how this all goes down. So today on the show, we're going to be talking about the comparison between these two. Which one is better? Which one should you pick up? And, and by the way, this isn't a clear-cut answer. These fit in two specific roles in two specific groups of people and a couple of different use cases. So let's go to the tabletop and talk all about it. Let's say you were on a long road, right? And you were the point car in a group of cars going down the road and you had a little radio type device on your roof. We'll call this zero, two miles. And there's another car here. Now, often, uh, what you can do is is voice comms using something like a walkie-talkie on both ends, right? And you can do voice, no big deal. What you can't do often, unless you go down the road of amateur radio, is provide things like your location at any one time. If you're going to put a drop a pin, if you will, on a map, showing them lat long coordinates, or provide information like messaging, right? So that's what these devices do. They communicate over something called LoRa, which stands for long range, and they mesh, meaning they'll send their packets back and forth to each other and communicate via this wireless path. If for some reason you had multiple different entities over a longer space, so what if we added a zero here and said 20 mile, radius. Well, this is definitely not doing it. These little devices are just not going to make the cut. So we add other nodes in. So maybe there's a, a truck here, right? A semi truck. And it's here, right? And it also has one of these devices. And then you had another, another car here, or maybe another truck. You get the idea. And it has a device. And maybe there's another semi, right? So these guys all have mesh network capability. And what happens now, instead of trying to make this long run over here, we make short hops along the path. And they create a new network where your one message that starts out here ends up getting amplified, boosted, and sent along the path, right, for the multiple nodes until it gets to your destination party. All this needs to all that needs to happen is that this T beam along with every T beam that's in the space needs to know about each other. And the way they do that is with a channel that you create. And channels usually only require a QR code. Um, you know, this is my QR code example, right? That you take a picture of, send it to your friend, they get uploaded and copied to each T beam using the mesh tastic software and now they're going to be able to communicate. The same applies for these GoTenna devices. They just have a different way of doing it. But once they know about each other, they can communicate. This has the added capability of being able to squawk to all GoTenna devices, which makes them pretty handy um, when you're out and about and you just have like an emergency call and you don't know who has them. The problem is that the adoption rate of a lot of this stuff 
is pretty slim, as you can imagine. These are about $200 for a pair, and these guys run about $45 for each one. This comes with a battery holder for an 18650. You have to provide the 18650, and then you can just throw it across the room. So that's the, the major differences in cost is that these are much more expensive. These don't last as long battery-wise, I've found, in compared to the lower devices. These will go for about three days on an 18650 charge. There are tap points that you could attach a USB power bank or some kind of stable power while also solar charging these. So th this is really advantageous if you have some kind of node you want to establish. Anyway, let's pull out. A thing to keep in mind before we dive into this is that you're dealing with two sides of the fence here. The Meshtastic devices are, you know, open source software using devices that are kind of freely available for companies to come in and make their own versions of these LoRa boards. And there, there are multiple LoRa boards that exist. Whereas is the Gotenna, you're, you're basically buying into Gotenna's branding, their, their business, their reliability on software updates, which so far has been fine for the capability, but, but keep that in mind. Note that going in with these LoRa devices, you likely need to be a little bit more tech savvy. You know, keep that in mind. And if you need help with that, then maybe consider this month's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare can help those in the amateur radio community by learning how to better control the computers that are in their shack, or in my case, flesh out what I know about electrical circuits. I am currently taking Ultimate Electric Circuits course for electrical engineering by Ahmed Mahdi. And I've found that this course helps fill in some of that background that uh, we kind of just assume when we're looking at amateur radio books and how-tos, sometimes even YouTube videos. We throw around different names of circuits kind of willy-nilly, but we don't really go into the background of what makes them work or even a foundation, which I'm lacking coming from a software engineer, not necessarily electrical engineer. So far, the classes have been very helpful, again, filling out some of that background. My goal is to get to a point where when a name is said of a circuit, I'll know a bit about how it actually functions and what it's made up of, not just that it's something that goes in here to perform an L match or something along those lines for our antenna. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get one month free. So join me, let's start Skillshare together, do something fun. Okay, here's two different devices, Android and a Apple device, an iOS device. These devices, both the Gotenna Mesh and the Meshtastic LoRa devices will work with both platforms. These are tablet-based, phone-based devices. Um, the Gotennas will not work over Wi-Fi. However, the LoRa devices will. So if you wanted to connect your LoRa devices over Wi-Fi, you can do that. They basically will give their own location at any one time, um, displaying basically what you have on your phone. These do not have GPS enloaded on them. The LoRa's do. But their primary function, so if we go over here, we've got two different GIDs for the two mesh devices here. And we can send a chat or an emergency if we want to. Let's start with that. We'll send a new shout chat. So we'll say, hi, all, send. And I got a hi all on this side, so I can go. So after receiving a shout uh, from Josh here, I can click add or you know, add contact, which I've already done here. It attaches to a phone number, so keep that in mind. And I can go back and now I can create just a directed message to Josh, who I've clicked again. Uh, my phone number is attached to this, that's why I'm not showing you more of it, but we can say test, fire that off. And if I go back up here, we should see test. Boom, there you go. So here's the contact that came in from me here on this blue Gotenna to this green one. Test back, and we'll see it here. Go. Received on this side, and he got it. So that's basically how it worked. And if I wanted to, I could make a pin. So let's say we wanted to set a location for where we were gonna hike this weekend. I can go in here, set a, create a pin, we can go meet up, to which I'll send to this other device. So I've attached a pin from the map. It says attached pin here. And if I send that, I'll now see a meetup location, which I can click on. And there's 
the meetup location. And you can get a bit more precise with this as you zoom in. So if we wanted to go to some San Gabriel mountain or meet up at a lake or meet up somewhere in Azusa, California, we could drop a pin that way. Of course, these are line of sight. So once they stop being able to transmit to themselves and they stop working. So keep that in mind. Now, some of the downsides with these GoTenna devices, devices is uh, the price at almost $200 for the pair here, it, it puts it out of the realm where most people would want to spend the money. And it definitely makes it difficult to roll out in mass and create a mesh network. They are convenient, however, they've got the little straps, they are USB micro chargeable here, and you can kick them into a relay mode, which would be, if you had three of them, you could have one over here that's just relaying for the other two or a larger network. It makes it handy. Also, it's a commercial product, right? This is a commercial box. You buy one of these, it comes just like this. It's, it's ready to go. Clip it on a bag, charge it up, and use it when you are off-grid or off-network or just deciding to just use this as a communication platform. Let's flip this over to the Loras, though, and talk a little bit about them. All right, flipping this around, uh, this is the MeshTastic device on iOS connected to MeshTastic 1214, which is this guy. 14. And this guy's connected to 954, which is off the side here. Now, I, I will note that uh, I did have to use the Android to set this up on its own specific channel. In this case, I just made an HRCC long range and slow channel. That's what allows me to make the really long distance contacts. This is what allowed me to communicate over three miles with these units. With this done, uh, they're now reporting location to each other. And we can go a step further if I wanted to go to my contacts list. So we have a relay, which is a mesh tastic that's not here, uh, KI6NAZ home, which is one of these, and then prime, which is the one that I go around with and do portable if I'm taking it with me. If I go to all broadcast though, I can say um, test hello. It says a 228 max bytes transfer that it can do over text. And I'll bring up my chat here and hit send. So he got the message. He's gonna get it eventually, whenever he's turned on. Uh, there it is, test hello. So, okay, so he got it. Uh, and that's basically what this looks like. That's all this is, right, guys? I, I wanna be really clear. Thank you for watching the video, but this is kind of what this does. It allows you to send location, which is what I did here, and send messages back and forth. For some of you, the novelty of this may be lost, and I get it. The thing to keep in mind is that both of these devices and the Gotenna are encrypted. They're AES-256 encrypted, and in the case of these MeshTastic devices, they can take these much bigger antennas and actual permanent antennas. You can also wire these up to take um, voltage in for solar panels if you're running through a charge controller or whatnot. So they're incredibly valued from that point of view. So let's wrap this up with the comparison between the two devices. All right, so let's let's talk a little bit more about comparing these two devices. Uh, the, the MeshTastic LoRa devices, they're more down the maker path than anything else. You're gonna have to solder these boards on, which is, you know, fine for a lot of folks. It, it's really just these four pins. It's, it's very simple to solder. The Gotennas are just out of the box ready to go, right? They are uh, commercial devices that have an application that's available in all markets, Android and iPhone, and they just kind of work. The downside of this, though, is that you're kind of beholden on the updates that Gotenna does to these, which is fine because, again, it, it's a relatively simple application, but it doesn't support larger batteries, aside from having a battery bank permanently attached here, which you can do, and that includes attaching that to a solar panel for charging. It doesn't have an external antenna port, which means that you're not going to be able to attach things like you can with the mesh tastics here. Price is also a major downside. You're, you're basically paying for this fit and finish that you get between these devices. $200 for a pair of these versus $45 for one mesh tastic. You, you do the math there. Now I did 3D print a case here, which is where um, these generally live. And again, these are running 18650 batteries, which I just leave connected. There's button clicks on the side and the USB port is available if you, if you want to use that. The MeshTastic devices will seems to connect easier to solar panels. And there are many different options for hardware 
for these devices. The T-beams that I'm displaying here, that's just one device. There are other companies and manufacturer that will make devices that the Mesh Tastics works with, and the Mesh Tastic website goes into further detail if you want to make that happen. At the end of the day, for most amateur radio folks, uh, for most of those that can do a bit of soldering, the Mesh Tastics are going to offer greater ability, greater control, greater performance. For those of you that just want something turnkey, you just want semi-protected, again, AES-256 encryption, which is pretty good uh, communication between devices, the GoTenna might be the way to go. I can't comment on how robust these mesh together, meaning if you had uh, multiple, multiple instance of these all in a you know relatively close location that still is broken up a bit, how well these all mesh and how quickly they transfer data and whatnot. But I can comment that I have tested with three mesh tastics with one acting as a relay. And these guys worked out perfectly. And the software has grown considerably since then as far as reliability and options. And for you prosumer types, you can connect this over Wi-Fi, which is a nice little addition to have because then you can have this added communication capability just connected to your local network. And I want to be really clear for those of you that don't understand what I mean by off-grid. If you have a local Wi-Fi and you're not connected to power and you're charging it off of a battery setup or solar or whatever, um, and you're not paying for Verizon or Fios, you can technically use these to communicate to other mesh devices on other networks. Now, you're not going to be brokering data. You're not going to be using this for network data traffic. You are able to use this for message traffic and message handling and location information if you so wanted to do so. So that is one advantage, one perk that these devices don't have. Now, for me, the Mesh Tastic gets the nod. These LoRa devices are $45. They're cheap. They run on 18650s. If I wanted to bodge up a solar panel and a charge controller, I could do that. In fact, I already have a box configured to be ready to go for that. And here it is. This is the relay node that I made when I did that long range test. I put this outside at about 20 feet uh, with a charge battery and I was able to get three miles away from this and still get my messages through from my cell phone on the go. That is not the maximum limit of these at all. In fact, you, you can probably go much further than that. The world record is 150 to 200 kilometers. Now keep in mind, that is line of sight, meaning that like you can see the summit that that person is transmitting from the antenna to antenna. You likely won't get that if you're gonna be in a suburbs, in an urban environment, or uh, between vehicles, or in forests, stuff like that. We're talking straight line of sight, no obstructions. But in all my nerd and geekdom and makerdom and all those little circles of, of communities that I roll in, uh, this appeals to people outside those communities. This is for strapping onto somebody and telling them to go in the field or putting this on somebody's car, tethering it, and then being able to communicate when you're on a trip. That has a lot of value and you can't really second guess that. For me though, uh, I'll, I'll just figure out a way to strap this on a kid or an uncle or an aunt or a grandfather or a grandmother. That doesn't matter. Um, these still have value and only you're going to be the one that can decide that. I hope this video was helpful. I really do appreciate everybody watching. Leave your comments below. There was a lot of confusion. I really tried hard to clear up all the confusion in the last video on the LoRa Mesh-tastic devices, and hopefully this adds a little bit more character to it. If you're curious about what else uh, you want to know or there's questions that remain, please comment below. If you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. If you have not already, please subscribe. Consider clicking that bell to let you know every time I go live or post a video. I am Josh KI6NAZ. You've been watching the Ham Radio Crash Course. Thanks so much for doing so. 73. And for those that don't know Ham Radio, it means best wishes. See ya.